A telephone survey with regard to support of a bond issue resulted in this. This age group, this is for or against. Which of the following sampling strategies was most likely to be used? What do you think? Matt? You say which one? D, stratified? Anybody? I said A. You said A. The answer is stratified. Given the exact number of people surveyed in each age group, stratified sampling was probably the strategy used. In, strat in stratified sampling, the population is divided into homogeneous groups called strata. In this example, it was age. Okay. What number was that? Okay, so let's do another one. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Number two. What answer do we think it is? Is it one only? Is it two only? Is it three only? Is it one and two? Is it two and three? What does the survey say? Well, wouldn't it be A? Because surveys are sort of said, like, you just gain the you're just asking questions of the population. Okay. But you don't necessarily have the control within that group. And there's certain biases that can be that can come from that. Mm. What do you guys think? I agree with you right in. The answer is A. Surveys are generally cheaper and quicker to conduct um, than experiments. However, surveys are subject to bias, and we have talked about that because if you have questions. And it is very difficult to conclude cause and effect. So, there we go. This is going to be a hard one for you, um, Paige and Alexa, but I'm going to tr we're going to try. Okay, there we go. Two studies are run to compare the experiences of low-income families receiving food stamps to those receiving cash sub subsidies. The first study interviews 50 families who have been in each government program for at least two years. Why the second randomly assigns 50 families to each program and interviews them after two years. Which of the following is a true statement? Okay, what do we think this is? A, B, C, D, E. What do you guys think? C? Everyone agree with C? Okay, at home, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you guys think C? Yeah. That's a good thing because it is correct. Ooh, the crowd went wild. Ah, okay. You guys are not in the mood, apparently. Okay, that's fine. Here's another one. It is a Monday. Okay, a food judge is given an assignment to choose and sample the food at 52 out of over 20,000 New York restaurants. She has an assistant list all restaurants whose name begins with A, assigns each a number, and uses a random number generator to pick two of these numbers and thus two restaurants. She proceeds to use the same procedure for each letter of the alphabet and combines the results into a group of 52. Which of the following are true statements? Her procedure makes use of chance. Her procedure results in a symptom random sample. Each restaurant in New York has an equal probability of being selected. Okay, so what do we think? Do we think it's one and two? One and three? Two and three? One, two, and three? Or does none of the above give a correct answer? Bingo. Okay, so some of them say E. What do you guys think, e-learners? At home, E, E, anybody for E? E. E? E? Yes, it is E. Only one is a true statement. This re will re not result in a simple random sample because each possible set of 52 restaurants does not have the same chance of being selected. You guys, remember... You should have, like, you could have 52 restaurants that could be all selected with B as their first name, right? Like, to start with the letter B, that's a simple random sample. This way, you only can have two. Um, 
and it goes on, for example, a group of 52 restaurants whose names all start with A will not be chosen. Even though the food judge does use chance, each restaurant would have the same chance of being selected only if the same number of restaurants have names starting with each letter of the alphabet. So it is E. So again, you guys, none of these statements, only one is true. Um, so that's why. Okay. How are we doing? Are we doing okay? Okay. In a study of Parkinson's disease, 100 volunteers had incisions made through their skulls. Hmm. The patients were randomly sorted into two groups, one of which had a new drug inserted into their brain. In the other group, the skulls were closed with no treatment given. The patients did not know who received the drug. In the weeks to follow, all 100 volunteers showed similar improvement in physical condition. What is this example of? I don't know, but this... Okay, so what did we think? This is an effective of a treatment unit, the placebo effect, the control group effect, sampling error, voluntary response bias. Well, they're... Okay, what did we think it is? I think it might be response bias too, but it is unfortunately, not unfortunately, it is the placebo effect. Patients believing they have received the new drug may be able to somehow alleviate, alleviate their own symptoms. Such a medical effect based on power of suggestion is called a placebo effect. Okay. How would we know that the drug doesn't just suck? We got some migrant, migrant, oh my God. We have some patients with migraines. I do know how to talk, people. 50 migraine patients are randomly selected from hospital records. Half of the patients are told to drink ice water and sit in the dark when they, when they next experience a migraine. The remaining patients are told to use neither of these possible remedies. Participants then report back as to relief, if any. Serious faults of this experimental design include which of the following? So, um, so there are some serious faults in this one. One, two, three, one and two, two and three. Notice that it didn't say all of them and it doesn't say none of them. So <laughs> one of them is the answer. So what do you guys think? E-learners at home? E, E, B as in boy, E, E. E as in egg? Yes, as in, as in the, the single egg that child just died. Okay. B. It's not B as in boy, and it's not E as in egg. So we're going to go back to the drawing board. Hmm. Uh, okay, so give me another chance. The answer is actually D. There is no indication that randomization is being used to decide which patients have the treatment of ice water and darkness and which patients are in the control group. If the treatment of ice water and darkness helps, there is no way to tell whether ice water or darkness or the combination of both is responsible. And so the variables will be confounded. Lack of blinding is not a design fault here because blinding is impossible in this experiment. So you guys, they gave them two things. They gave them ice water and to go into the dark, right? Well, which one is helping them? The ice water or the darkness? So they should have had a group that had ice water, a group that just sat in darkness, of course, a control group, and then maybe they should have had another group. So, Go ahead. So with the randomization, you just don't pause there. No, I did not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you time to think about this question. Okay, what do we got? Uh, okay, what do we think? E, E, are we going with E? Any? E, the answer is E. You should know by now that a regression line 
shows association, not causation. Surveys suggest relationships, but not cause and effect. And the only thing that does that is a controlled experiment. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so a sales representative wishes to survey her client base of 47 companies. She has 47 business cards, all of the identical size from her contacts in the companies, and decides to drop them all in a small box, shake them up, and reach in and pick five cards for her sample. This procedure is an example of which type of sampling? What do you guys think? I think it's bluff. You think it's bluff? What did you say? Okay, so don't just ignore me because I don't know what I'm listening. I'm hearing. Okay, what do we think? I think it's C. You think it's C? Do you guys think it's simple random sample? What do you guys think, hot e learners? Hybrid bees. If you guys said a simple random sample, you are correct. It is C. A simple random sample is a one of which every possible sample of the desired size has an equal chance of being selected. In this case, every possible sample of five companies has an equal chance of being selected. Note that even though it is also true that each company has an equal chance of being selected, this by itself would not ensure that it was an SRS. But it, it is a simple random sample. You guys, the other thing is, just so you know, that it's, I can see where I mean, you might pick convenience, but her, she is talking about her 47 companies. She wants to survey her 47 companies, so her population is 47. It just happens to be the same size sample as well. Okay. This is one of my, not my favorite question, but I think it's a very interesting question. So if you're an e-learner, you might want to pause this to give yourself some time to read. A newspaper advice columnist asked her readers if they would have married their current spouse if they had to do it all over again. Of the 25,000 or so responses, 80% said no. What does this show? The survey is meaningless because of voluntary response bias. No meaningful conclusion is possible without knowing something more about the characteristics of her readers. The survey would have been more meaningful if she had picked a random sample of the 25,000 readers who responded. The survey would have been more meaningful if she had used a control group. This was a legitimate sample randomly drawn from her readers and of sufficient size to allow the conclusion that most of her readers who are married would have Second thoughts about marrying, the, marrying their current spouse. I don't, yeah. Okay, you guys, what do we think? It is A, yes. This is, this is an example of voluntary response bias, which often overrepresents negative opinions. The people who chose to respond were most likely those who were very unhappily married, and so there is very little chance that the 25,000 respondents were representative of the population. Knowing more about her readers or taking a sample of the sample would not have helped. Okay, oh, you guys can't read that. There you go, okay. Let's see. Okay, next. Sampling errors occur when uh, interviewers make mistakes resulting in bias, when interviewers use judgment instead of random choice in picking the sample, when samples are too small because a sample statistic is used to estimate a population parameter, in all of the above cases. Mm. If you, okay, probably not the best question to give you right now, but we'll go for it. What do you guys think? Okay, so in this one, um, 
Sampling error occurs because a sample statistic is used to estimate a population parameter and um, the different samples give different sample statistics, all of which are estimates of the same population per parameter. And so error called sampling error is naturally present. If you didn't get this, that's okay because we really haven't talked about sampling error. I don't know why it's in here. Um, it will come into play. So if you didn't get that one, please understand it won't be on the test and you're not, it's not like, oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm doing that. You're fine. Okay. Which of the following are true statements? If bias is present in a sample procedure, it can be overcome by dramatically increasing the sample size. There is no such thing as a bad sample. Sampling techniques that use probability techniques effectively eliminate bias. One only, two only, three only. None of the statements are true. None of the above gives the complete set of true responses. Okay, what do you think? Which are the following true statements? I think, I really like, there is no such thing as a bad sample. That's like telling someone there is no such thing as a bad haircut. <laughs> I guess so. Okay, so what do we think? What do you guys think? Did you say D? If there is bias, taking a larger sample just magnifies the bias. That's pretty good. If there is enough bias, the sample can be worthless. Even when the subjects are chosen randomly, there can be bias due, for example, to non-response or to the wording of the questions. So the answer is D. None of them are, none of them are true. Um, and I would beg to differ, so why wouldn't E? I'm going to tell you on the AP exam, you will just have none of the above. Okay? I so. You would be assuming that you think two of them are correct. Yeah, I think, yeah, you could. Or you're saying part of it's correct. I don't know. But I do know that number two is, I know two for sure. There is such thing as a bad sample. Okay? Okay.